Hello, Nick. Good to see you. Congratulations. Hey, how are you? I am obsessed with you. Like your movies ruin my life because oh, I good. watch. I keep getting these movies from you that I obsessively watch over and over and over. And then I don't watch the other movies that I have to for work. Aha, it's working. Perfect. Yeah, wow. yeah. Thanks. Uh, job very well done. Um, to tease what Tyler is all about for people who haven't seen the menu just yet, can you tell me what your favorite and least favorite quality of his is? You know, a part of him that maybe you admire a little and then also something about him that people should keep an eye out for as things get crazier and crazier in the film. I think that's a, a tricky one because the things that I admire and hate about him are also the, so close together and entwined. There's this, uh, you know, the tragic elements of him, are the, this um, his desperation to be accepted and how uncomfortable he is in his skin and just to kind of feel wanted, I suppose. Um, and then and then there's this real pretentious kind of know-it-all mansplainy side of him that's kind of horrific as well. So there's there's lots of fun to be had. I guess one of the things that is kind of endearing about him is his passion and love of food. Yeah, I, I pose a similar question to Hong, and it seems like this is a group of people where, you know, often their best quality winds up becoming a, a terrible double-edged sword. Yeah, 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 completely. All right. So this set basically sounds like the ultimate acting masterclass to me with the way you shot this film. So while you were doing your scenes, is there anything that you saw a menu co-star do that, I don't know, either either wowed you or made you think, I got to back pocket that technique and I got to try it on my next movie? Ooh, I don't know if there was technique things where I was like, oh, but you know what? I loved watching John Leguizamo and Amy Carrero's takes because they their improvisational skills were so impressive and so funny. They would just be like, they were just, it was like they would just been unleashed on a scene. And and the originality of what they were coming up with and the dynamic between those characters was really, really fun. But I mean, each table had so many wonderful elements and brilliant actors that it was, it really was like a joy when you knew that the camera wasn't on you and you could just purely watch and enjoy um, what was happening. All right, I'll ask uh, specifically about Anya now, because you guys share quite the dynamic in the film. What is it about her that you appreciated as a scene partner the most that, you know, maybe even brought something out of you that you wouldn't have been able to access without her? Oh, I mean, Anya is such an incredible actress in terms of her authenticity in every moment, but also being very open and giving to to you as a, as a, a, a scene partner. So you kind of get this ability to, to try things and run with things and and then and feel completely like you're in the moment together. I think one of the really fun things about our dynamic in this in this relationship in the film is that we have for all intents and purposes a, a surface level of this relationship that you watch as the audience and you kind of think that perhaps they're a normal couple and then there's gradual little hints and clues as you go that perhaps things are not what they seem. And that was really fun for us to play because it's kind of how much of a hint can you give to the audience while still keeping it in the right realm? And then also for Anya's character, she's giving a performance within a performance of who she is. So it was really fun to watch the veil occasionally drop for a split second and then and then appear again. And, and that was just, you know, incredible acting to, to witness. It's an impossible movie to talk about. I'm just like bursting at the seams, wanting to go a little too far uh, to keep us well clear of spoiler territory. I wanted to go back to the the improv. Is there any example that you could remember from filming of another actor who threw kind of a, an unexpected curveball at you and you had a run with it and the scene turned out better off for it? I think one of the key moments that was always fun is, is there's a there's a beat in the film later on for my character when Rafe whispers in my ear. And Rafe was always whispering something different. And I won't say what they were, but it's, it was always exciting because there was always an anticipation from my side of things of what he was going to say and how that would affect me. So that was also just yeah, a fun moment. All right. I got some like silly, very silly, random food questions for you. So right. the, fir the first one on my little list here is, what's your most controversial food opinion? Uh, I don't know if this is controversial. I just don't like aniseed flavors and like licorice and stuff. Um, so take that and yeah, do what you want with it. If that's controversial, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah, um, I don't care what people think of me. I don't like licorice. <laughs> I don't either. What, <laughs> what food do you have the most of at home right now? Uh, what food do I have the most of right now? Uh, you know what? Uh, 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 bread. Bread. 
that's the right answer. There's a certain scene in this movie that felt like it was speaking directly to me and it stressed me out. <laughs> you can only use one condiment for the rest of your life. Which condiment do you pick and why? This is very difficult because I do like condiments. Um, you know what? I've recently been putting a lot of Japanese barbecue sauce on things and I'm happy about it and I'm excited about where it's taken my life. Okay, I think I'm going to have to go buy some of that now. Mm. Can you name a kitchen appliance that you own but have no idea how to use? Ooh, uh, no, I think, all, I think all the things I've got I know how to use. I don't really have that many crazy appliances, though. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> that that question was more for me. Who knows how to use basically nothing in the kitchen? Um, this is more character specific. But what do you think Tyler's favorite food is that he would be embarrassed to admit to Chef Slowick? Ooh, I, I, well, you know what? I think that's interesting because actually, I think the thing with Chef Slowick, the thing that takes him back to his happiest moment, is this idea of just creating a great cheeseburger. And I'm sure there's something with Tyler as well, where he's probably someone who suppresses painful childhood stories. And I and, that, and I had this whole idea with him that he was actually probably punished somewhat with food by his parents at certain points and has then grown to love it again. So there's probably some, some uh, emotional uh, qualities of his childhood that are wrapped up with things. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. I didn't really now answer I your question. Now I want a whole prequel about his story. <laughs> um, before they kick me out of here, I have to ask one question about Nosferatu because I've been looking forward to that movie for a long time. And I was revisiting an interview I had done with uh, Robert back in 2016 when The Witch first came out. And when I asked him about it, he flat out said that that movie is a masterpiece and that it doesn't really need to be redone. <laughs> so now mm -hmm. that you're actually gearing up to make it, what is it con that's convincing you about his script that yes, this this movie is something that is necessary to redo right now. Well, it's, I mean, I am a fan of the original, but I think knowing Robert's work and knowing that he's wanted to make this film and tell this story, I think he's been obsessed with it since he was about eight years old, he told me. So when it means that much to him personally and knowing what he's created with the Northman, the lighthouse and the witch, I'm like, his version of that story is something that I, as a fan, would be excited to see. So to get to go make it with him is something I'm really looking forward to. I feel like you're going to get the reverse question a lot today, but did Anya give you any advice for working on a Robert Eggers set? You know what? She she said it was the most incredible thing because he demands a lot of you, but that he's also capable of pulling those things out of you as a performer. Um, the, at the end of the day, when you go home, you feel very satisfied and like the fact that you've you've hopefully given something special and, and there's nothing worse than finishing a day and going home and being like, ah, could I have that little niggling feeling of like, could I have done something better? Could I have brought more to that? So I'm, I'm looking forward to him really pushing me and, and demanding a lot. Oh my, what a lovely answer. I cannot wait to see that. But in the meantime, I will be watching the menu over and over and over again. So thank you great. for yet another one of those and huge congratulations. Hey, thank you so much.